What's up, everybody? It's me, Roku, back with some more Baldur's Gate 3 content. I'm in this dingy, dark dungeon over here, chilling with the homie, Withers! Yeah, Withers! Anyway, <laughs> Withers is quite important to the subject matter of this video, which is multi-classing. Multi-classing is an amazing part of this already amazing game, but it is a little intimidating to get into, especially if you're new to D&D or just Baldur's Gate 3 in general. That is what I'm going to try to alleviate with this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the basics of multi-classing, some generally good practices so you never go wrong with it, and also some of my favorite multi-classes that I've either find out myself or that I've talked to my friends and they've told me. So yeah, let's get right into it. Remember to subscribe to Roku for more great content. Also, I decree that this video hits 300 likes. A big thing to note about multiclassing is that it's quite trial and error -y, in that you really want to just go in-game and try these combinations out for yourself to see whether you like them or whether some abilities work together like you'd imagine them to work together. Now, the game doesn't really offer a sandbox mode to easily test these things out, especially if you don't have a level 12 character, which is why I've made this save. This slave possesses a level 12 character and enough gold, mind you, half the gold will be in Shadowheart's inventory, that you can use to respect to your heart's content. And as an added bonus, if we leave camp, there are some nice, juicy, rotund goblins to try your new powers and abilities out on. So yeah, let's get on with the video. Multi-classing is straight up not possible on the Explorer difficulty. So if you're playing on this difficulty and you're enjoying your time, what you want to do is switch off of it, get the multi-class into the other class in, and then you can switch back into it and then put points into whichever class that you want. So yeah, that's a quick little life hack if you're playing on Explorer difficulty. Heyo, I'm down here now. So to access multi-classing, when you're in your level up page, you have to press this little button here, add class. So you click on here, and then you can pick whichever class you want to multi-class your levels into. Now, because there are so many options to choose from, it might be a little bit daunting initially, but with these tips, you'll be making your choices in no time. First things first, you gotta have a main class. You can't just multi-class from the start, unless in very rare cases, or if you know exactly what you want. The best way to go by this is to have one main class, and then multi-class into something that will be useful to that main class in terms of their playstyle to spice things up. Let's say that you're playing as a wizard. You're loving casting your fireballs, one-shotting people, but you realize that if anybody comes up close, they completely destroy you. To cure this, you might want to multi-class into something that gives you a bit of multi-damage proficiency to be like a war mage knight, which is an amazing concept to roleplay as. Now, you might look at the other classes, and if you go into Barbarian as a multi-class, that'll be a huge mistake. Why? Because of tip number two, know what doesn't work together. Barbarian does not work together well with any of the other spellcasting classes because of Rage. Rage is Barbarian's central identity, and when you have Rage activated, you cannot cast spells, or most spells in the game. Which means that as a wizard, if you do Rage once you've multiclassed into Barbarian, you can't cast your super powerful fireball spells, which sucks. So what do you want to do if you want to get that nice armory melee action in? You want to go into Fighter, which is a much more versatile melee class. One big sort of idea is you don't want to think of classes in their entirety, in that, oh, fighter is this big, giant, knight fighter guy who's versatile. No. You want to think of the exact ability or, or effect that you want from that class when multiclassing. So fighter, for example, has something that is very useful to almost everyone in the game, and that is action surge. For only two points into fighter, you get action surge, which is hugely useful to characters that like to get a lot of damage out per action. So your paladins, your wizards, any spellcaster, it's just an amazing ability, which is why Fighter is one of the most multi-classed classes in the entire game. This one is a rule for caster characters, in that if you're playing wizard or sorcerer, warlock or something, you really gotta know what main ability your abilities stack off of, in that if you're playing wizard, all of your main spells do extra damage based on your intelligence, but sorcerer uses charisma. So combining these two classes might not be the best idea, because as a wizard, if you use sorcerer spells that are working off of charisma, which you don't have a lot of, you might not be able to do too much damage unless you spec into that as well. So if you're going to do that, be sure to be mindful of the exact proficient abilities that those classes use. When coming up with multi-class plans, you want to pull up what a class gets at every single level and plan it with another class to see how it matches up. 
Let's say that you want to multi-class into Fighter. Fighter has a bunch of power spikes at different levels, and it's quite simple, so I'm going to use it for the example. So at level 2, as we discussed, it has Action Surge. At level 3, you get the spec into Champion, which is great for crit characters, and Battle Master if you want to have more maneuvers in melee range. And Fighter also gets an extra attack at level 5, and an improved extra attack at level 11. Now with all this being said, every single point you put into Fighter, is one less point you'll put into your main class. So if it's something like Wizard, where you kind of want those levels to like scale up because all the spellcaster characters scale up really hard with levels, you might not want to put too many points into the multi-class and just get the action surge. But if you're looking at something like Paladin, or something else like Barbarian, then more points into Fighter might be useful. Mind you, there is an effect called Extra Attack that does not stack between classes in that Barbarian and Fighter both get extra attack at level 5, but that doesn't mean you get two extra attacks. You still get the same one. It does not stack, so that's a big thing to keep note of. Initially, I recommend that you make heavy use of modular classes. Now, this is a term that I've made up for the video, but basically, a modular class is a class that gives you a ton of utility and power with only 2 to 3 levels. The one we already discussed is Fighter, which gives you Action Surge. The next one, which is very, very useful, is Rogue 3, because it gives you access to two of its subclasses, Thief and Assassin. Thief is super useful for classes that make heavy use of bonus actions, so Monk, for example. And Assassin is amazing if you want to go for like a sort of flanker, sort of sniper setup with Ranger, for example. But yeah, Rogue is an amazing class to multi-class into with a lot of different setups. The next multi-classing sort of um, modular setup is Warlock 2. Now, Warlock 2 gives you Eldritch Blast, which scales off of Charisma, so if you're going for like a Sorcery or Paladin, it's amazing. And the thing about Eldritch Blast on Warlock is that it scales off of your own character's level, not Warlock level. So you can just put two points into Warlock and get really high level Eldritch Blast, which can be super, super duper useful to use in a fight. The next modular class is going to be Wizard 1. Now, it sounds a little silly, but Wizard gives you the ability to learn basically the vast majority of the spells in-game. So if we're playing something that doesn't have all the spells in-game, you can just put one point into Wizard and learn them off of scrolls so that you can just have them in your inventory. And also you're not limited by the choice of, like, when you're leveling up, you can only choose a limited number of spells to learn as a Wizard or, like, as another spellcaster. If you go one point into Wizard, as long as you find the scroll of a spell that you didn't learn, you can still have it as like an option for it to cast in battle. The last modular class I'm going to talk about is Divine Smite, because Divine Smite is insanely powerful. So if you combine it with like a fighter or someone who can get multiple attacks out per turn, you can get multiple Divine Smites out and just completely destroy someone and dump all their damage on like a boss battle or something like that. It's very powerful. Now I'm not saying that these are all the modular classes, but these are the most commonly used ones that you'll see on the internet. The rest is for you to discover. Now for my favorite multi-classes that I've been able to play around with. One of my favorite multi-classes in the game is a very, very simple one, and that is Wizard and Fighter. So you go 10 points with the Wizard to have these amazingly powerful spells, and then 2 into Fighter to get Action Surge. What this does is it gives you the ability to cast 2 amazing spells in one turn, and it lets you wear some armor so that you are a bit of a beefy boy as a Wizard. So yeah, let's get into it. Fireball number 1. Nice. Toast the goblins. And, oh, okay, I guess we still have our turn. Let's uh, spice it up a little. Bam. So we go down here. Action surge. Pew. And then we can light them up with lightning. <laughs> nice. All right, on to the next multi-class. This next build is one of my favorites because it is an all-out melee fighter crit build. You go level 3 fighter you get Champion, then you go level 9 Barbarian to get access to Brutal Critical, and you gotta go Berserker. Now it's also helpful if you go for Half Orc as your race to get even more damage when you crit, and this thing is amazingly fun in combat. You also get Reckless Attack, which is insanely useful, so yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> yes, I do make these noises to myself when I play. <laughs> I don't care how stupid it is. Anyway, on to the next one. This one is one of my favorites. It is the Corrupted Paladin setup. So we go for 5 Paladin, and then level 7 Warlock with the Pact of the Blade. What this does is it gives us amazing melee damage with Divine Smite because we get access to the level 4 Warlock spell slots. And it gets back to us with every single short rest. So you can go Divine Smite, 
get that level 4 <laughs> spell out and deal a ton of damage. So yeah, let's just get right into it. Do music incoming. <laughs> let's go. I got another one in me. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Oh, he's got a fight in him. <laughs> Perfect. Alright, on to the next one. This next setup is Monk Thief. You go 9 Monk and 3 Rogue to get as many punches out in one turn as possible. So yeah, let's get right into it. Hiya! Being arrested for assault. Nope. Run them hands, bro. Run them hands. Okay. <laughs> Let's get into the action. Let's go. Another one. Another one. You get the idea. This next setup is an awesome one that I always go on Asterion because it is just amazing and just like a unique playstyle for the game. So you get Rogue 7 into Assassin and then level 5 Ranger Gloomstalker and this makes you like a Hitman stealth assassin sort of where you just sneak around and pick targets off. So let's say that, um, okay we gotta kill these guys right? We walk up, S sneak around, nice, and then we can just pick targets off one by one. The most important target. Alright, <laughs> combat. They're surprised, and then we can just rain arrows down on them. This is amazing because I didn't do it very cautiously here, and obviously because we don't have the time to, right? But basically speaking, this setup allows for you to use a lot of stats and a good bow on a ranged character, and have them take out enemies one by one by one, like just one-shot them before the fight even begins, because they can kill one enemy, right? Then combat begins, and then you can kill, kill a few more enemies, and then that's like three, four goons gone instantly as soon as the fight starts. And it's amazing if you're in an area where you can get into combat a lot, but you're up against like like a small number of characters. Because with a Gloomstalker, you can essentially kill all the enemies before the combat even starts, which basically makes you completely avoid it altogether. So it is insanely fun. So yeah, let's get into it. Well, let's get into the next one. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's just so that's why I killed the goblins. All right, next one. Bye. Does your team need a super duper tank? Well, fear not because Barbarian is here to help you out. So in this setup, you go Barbarian with a Bear Heart setup, and then you go level 8 Druid. And the general idea is that if you rage, you keep your rage when you get into your animal form. So let's just get into combat here for a second. Just one shot the goblin. Let's have Shadowheart run away. Actually, she's she's level 1 still. Okay. Do your thing, homeboy. Alright, now we rage. Uh, rage bear hard. Roar! Roar! <laughs> Alright. Now I'll do an attack just for fun. Okay. Yep, wild shape. And then let's pick... Let's go for owlbear. Just stay topical. Where's the owlbear? There we are. Cheap, cheap. Yeah. So the thing is, it doesn't look like it has a lot of health on paper, but the main idea is that you get all these resistances against, like, everything, man. Like, these resistances make it so that you get a ton of resistances in, like, the later portions of the game. Because later on, the characters that are up against it don't just do, like, physical damage. They get a lot of magical stuff going on, too. So this thing is resistant to, to, again, practically everything in the game. And you can also just heal again, right, with the bear heart that you can just heal up. If, like, the enemies somehow get you down to, like, low amounts of health. Which is absolutely amazing. So, yeah. If you want to have one beefy frontliner that is just impossible to take down, that can just tank everything, this is the guy for you to have on your team. This next setup is a sorcerer who has done a tiny amount of homework to become a wizard. The general idea is that although sorcerer has a lot of offensive capabilities, they don't have access to all the spells in the game, but the wizards do. So the power of the setup is you get to do all your sorcerer stuff, but you also get to learn all spells in the game by going up here and then learning them from your skulls for some gold. This is amazing because it basically opens up everything to you. Now a disclaimer, 
if you learn spells from a scroll, they will be spells that, like, the damage that they do will not be off of charisma, but it'll be off of intelligence. So please do keep that in mind. So if you're running a character without a lot of intelligence, then you better stick to just learning utility spells for your teammates and etc. But, I mean, if you have intelligence and charisma, then, you know, uh, <laughs> go full speed ahead and just crush your enemies. Alright, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have a favorite multiclass that you've discovered or you've heard about, let us know in the comment section below and I might try them out. So, yeah, this is it. Goodbye. Uh, say goodbye, withers. Goodbye. For now.